where did evolution come from? Yeah. Like, I, yeah. So, so this thing um, that from the very origin of life that took us to today, what, what, what the heck is that? I think evolution is inevitable in the sense that if you combine and, and, and basically I think one, one of the most uh, useful things that was done in early computing, you know, I guess in the sixties, it started was, was evolutionary computation and just showing how, how, uh, simple it is that, that if you have if you have imperfect heredity and competition together those two things with well, three things right so heredity imperfect heredity and competition or selection those three things and that's it now 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 you're you're off through the races right and so that can be it's not just on earth because it can be done in the computer it can be done in chemical systems it can be done in um you know lee smolin says it's it, it works in on on um, you know cosmic scales so i think that uh that kind of thing is incredibly um, pervasive and 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 general. It's a general feature of life. It's it's interesting to think about. You know the the standard uh, the standard thought about this is that it's uh, it's blind, right? Meaning that the 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 intelligence of the process is zero. It's stumbling around, and I think that back in the day when the options when the options were it's dumb like machines or it's smart like humans. Then of course the scientists went in this direction because nobody wanted creationism. And so they said, okay, it's gotta be like completely blind. I'm not actually sure. Right. Because, because I, I think that, um, I think that everything is a continuum and I think that it doesn't have to be smart with foresight like us, but it doesn't have to be completely blind either. I think there may be aspects of it. And in particular, this kind of multi-scale competency might give it a little bit of look ahead maybe, or a little bit of, um, problem solving sort of baked in, but, but, but that's going to be completely different in different, in different systems. I do think I do think it's general. I don't think it's just on Earth. I think it's a very fundamental thing. And it does seem to have a kind of direction that is taking us that's somehow perhaps is defined by the environment itself. It feels like we're headed towards something. Like we're playing out a script that was just like a single cell defines the entire organism. Yeah. It feels like from the origin of Earth itself, it's playing out a kind of script. Yeah, you can't really go any other way. I mean, so so this is very controversial, and I don't know the answer. But pe people have people have argued that uh, this is called uh, uh, you know sort of rewinding the tape of life, right? And and some people have argued. I think I think uh, I think Conway Morris maybe has argued that it, it it is that there's a deep attractor, for example, to human to the human. Um, uh, kind of uh, uh, structure in that, and that if you were to rewind it again, you'd basically get more or less the same thing. And then other people have argued that no, it's it's incredibly sensitive to frozen accidents, and that once certain stochastic decisions are made downstream, everything is going to be different. I don't know. I don't know. You know, we're we're very bad at predicting uh, attractors in the space of complex systems, generally speaking, right? We don't know. So, may, so maybe evolution on Earth has these deep attractors that no matter what has happened, it pretty much would likely to end up there, or maybe not. I don't know. Well, it's a really difficult idea to imagine that if you ran Earth a million times, 500,000 times you would get Hitler. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. we don't like to think like that. We think like, because at least maybe in America, you like to think that individual decisions can change the world. And if individual decisions can change the world, then surely any perturbation results in a totally different trajectory. But maybe there's a, in this competency hierarchy, it's a self-correcting system that just ultimately, yeah. there's a bunch of chaos that ultimately is leading towards something like a super intelligent artificial intelligence system. The answer's 42. I mean, there there might be a kind of imperative for life that it's headed to. And we're too focused on our day-to-day -day life of getting coffee and snacks and having sex and getting a, a promotion at work not to see the big imperative of life on earth that it's headed towards something. Yeah, may, maybe, maybe. I, I don't. It, it's 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 difficult. I, th I think one of the things that's important about um, chimeric uh, bioengineer technologies, all of those things, are that we have to start developing a better science of predicting the cognitive goals of of composite systems. So we're just not very good at it, right? We we don't know uh, if 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 
if I create a composite system, and this could be Internet of Things or Swarm Robotics or a cellular, a cellular swarm or whatever, what is the emergent intelligence of this thing? First of all, what level is it going to be at? And if it has goal-directed capacity, what are the goals going to be? Like, we are just not very good at predicting that yet. And I think that uh, it's it's a... Um, it's a it's a existential level uh, need for us to be able to because we're building these things all the time, right? We're building we're building both physical structures like swarm robotics and we're building uh, uh, social financial structures and so on with very little ability to uh, predict what sort of autonomous goals that system is going to have, of which we are now cogs. And so, right, so, so learning, learning to predict and control those things is going to be critical. So, we've, so, so in fact, so, so if you're right and there is some kind of attractor to evolution, it would be nice to know what that is and then to make a rational decision of whether we're going to go along or we're going to pop out of it or, or try to pop out of it. Because there's no guarantee. I mean, that's, that's, that's the other, you know, kind of important thing. A lot of people... I get a lot of complaints uh, from from pe people who email me and say, uh, you know, what you're doing, uh, it isn't natural, you know. And I'll say, look, natural that that'd be nice if if somebody was making sure that natural was 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 w w matched up to our values. But no one's doing that. By uh, you know, evolution optimizes for biomass. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's optimizing. It's not optimizing for your happiness. It's I don't think necessarily it's optimizing for 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 intelligence or fairness or any of that stuff. I'm gonna find that person that emailed you beat them up take their place um steal everything they own and say now we're now this is natural this is natural yeah exactly because because it comes from it comes from a from an old world view where you could assume that whatever is natural that that's probably for the best and i think we're long out of that garden of, of eden kind of view so i think we can do better we i, th I think we and we have to right we, natural just isn't great for for a lot of uh, a lot of life forms